Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. Today is all about handling the mean snakes. I have a feeling I might get bit a little bit. You're watching Snake Bites. Today's show is about handling mean snakes, but I want to make sure you guys understand that I work with thousands of snakes and the vast majority of them are beautifully tame animals, just like my Kribo here, Maya. She just loves people to death. But the truth is, when you're working with thousands of snakes, the one thing you get asked more than anything is, how often have you been bitten? And the truth is, over the last 25 years, I'm sure I've probably taken 100,000 bites by snakes. Now let me get a couple things straight here. There's no pride or a badge of honor for getting bitten by a snake. To be honest with you, every time I've been bitten, it's typically my fault for not taking the right precautions or just being careless when I'm handling a snake or even feeding a snake. Are there mean snakes? Absolutely. But the truth is the majority of snakes, even when they're aggressive, can eventually be tamed down. Now there's really two types of bites when it comes to snakes. And that's an aggressive or defensive bite, which is basically them just telling you, get away from me, I don't want you around me. And then there's the dreaded food bite when they think you're food and they're very extinctual and they'll just grab anything that's in front of their face. And those bites hurt the worst by far. Now we're gonna cover those topics today, but I also wanna talk about precautions and getting bit. So let's go ahead and just look at some aggressive snakes. What's the largest snake Brian has ever been bitten by? A, a 14-foot anaconda, B, an 18-foot Burmese python, or C, a 20-foot African rock python? Go ahead and answer down below in the comments and check back later in the show to see if you have the correct answer. In this week's Reptile Report Spotlight, we'll be highlighting tortoiseforum.org. Go ahead and check out the URL down below or click on the link in the description. Now some snakes, believe it or not, are just kind of mean by nature, and certainly tree bullets out are certainly one of them right there, as you can see. Now this is an Amazon tree boa, and these guys are always really fired up. But what you gotta remember is that when these guys are in the canopy and a bird flies by, they've gotta be lightning quick and grab that prey, right? But they also don't wanna be messed with at all. And this animal right here is certainly has an aggressive and defensive nature. That's basically saying, just leave me alone or I'm gonna bite you. <laughs> you can see it's coming pretty close. Let's go ahead and see if we can get this guy out of the cage. Oh. So you gotta be careful. And again, you never really wanna hurt the animal if you absolutely can. I just very gently pick it up. And hey, again, getting bit a little bit isn't that big of a deal for me. You can see those big teeth that those tree boas have. And trust me, these guys pack quite a punch for a little tiny snake like this. So you have to be really careful. And even after all the snake bites that I've had, I still get the goosebumps when I know a good snake bite is coming. And this guy is getting a little bit too close for my face for sure. Now again, getting bit isn't really that big of a deal, even with an animal like this that has really large teeth. But I wanna show you guys how you would handle a snake like this so you don't get bit. So let's go ahead and reset and start over again. A snake hook is a snake handler's best tool to avoid getting bit. And I hate to say it, but I don't use snake hooks too often, but if you do, you can completely avoid getting hit. Now the whole idea here is that you can control the animal's head. That's basically all you're trying to do. You're not trying to pick it up all the time. Just keep its head away, see? I can push its head away like this and I can get to its body really simply. And all you have to do is just continue to keep that hook on that head. And you see, it can't strike far enough away as long as I have that hook. Now a really good technique is to always kind of keep track of the snake's tail. Now tree boas want to climb up, so as long as you keep the hook 
in this position, it's not going to strike down at you at all. So it's kind of a perfect situation. And again, just kind of manipulate the animal in a direction so that it can't bite you. And as soon as it gets close, raise it back up and that snake's just going to go right back up. It's a great way to avoid getting hit. Tell you what, snake hooks have saved me a lot of times. I should certainly use them more often. So this is basically the technique I want to teach you, but let's go ahead and handle something a little bit more challenging. How about some king rats? There's always a little bit of an exhilarating feeling when you're face first into a king rat cage. Let me tell you what, let's see if I can get this guy here without getting bit. Now the whole idea behind these guys is to control them as much as possible. And as you can see, these guys are a completely different animal than the Amazon tree boys that basically just want to climb up. These guys just want to get away from you and you got to be so careful because they're really good at coming back on you like this guy is right now. You can see. Now it's much like handling an elapid where you just got to make sure that you're staying away from the business end. And you can see that guy is just completely fired up. Wah, wah. Oh, he got me right near the jewels right there, guys. Thank God I have some pants on. But they are really, truly beautiful snakes. But certainly something that you need some handling experience on or you're going to get bit an awful lot by these guys. Just take a look at that beauty right there. Woo! <laughs> He's just absolutely incredible, isn't he? Now, as far as handling these guys where you don't want to get bit, the first thing is always keep a really close eye on them. Don't be like me and take your eye off them for one second because they'll come around on you really quick. And a snake hook is going to help, but we need a much bigger hook. So let's go ahead and see if we can get a hook for us and get him back in his cage and start this whole process over again. Woo! Look at you, bugger. Yeah. <laughs> As you can see, I'm going to use a little longer hook than the Amazon tree bow. And again, it's because those king rats have a lot stronger and longer bite range for sure. And all you basically want to do with a hook like this is to control its head. Again, you're not looking to really pick a snake up with the snake hook, really. What you want to do is just be able to get its head in one direction so that you can grab its tail. And once you have its tail, you can control the snake pretty easily just like this. See, it's not nearly as difficult to handle. And just continue to move along as it's moving, keeping a hand on its tail right like this. And you can see it's much more safe to handle a snake like this. Just continue to keep the hook near its head and kind of guiding its head, keeping a good handle on its tail like this. And one of the tricks with handling a lapids is you always want your thumb right on the back of its spine. That way, if an animal is ever coming up to bite you, you just spin its spine and it'll actually spin down and it won't be able to grab your hand. Again, this is a great animal to train yourself to deal with things like tie pans and, and brown snakes. But again, you can see I'm in no danger of getting bit as long as I keep that snake hook and keep his head away from me. So again, there's no badges of honor about getting bit. And the truth is every time I handle a king rat, I should be using a tool like this. But I'm not going to lie, most of the time I just free handle them and I get bit way too often. So I've showed you a couple snakes that are aggressive and have that kind of defensive, aggressive bite, like stay away. Now there's an animal that is a little bit different and that's the anaconda. We have a green anaconda here and they're just kind of a different animal when it comes to biting. And I've seen a handful of really docile ones, but you can see sometimes you can pick them up and then just out of nowhere, they just strike at you. They just have absolutely no reaction whatsoever. Like normally you can read a snake, but as you can see that one almost got me in the face and I had no idea it was coming. Now unfortunately the problem with anacondas too is that when they do bite oftentimes they want to hang on almost like a food bite which is really aggressive. So although this guy didn't exactly get me I do have the snake bite goosebumps going on right now and I tell you when you do get bit by an anaconda they are pretty wicked too. They have pretty big teeth and they have a really powerful jaw. These guys are a handful I tell you what. Can you imagine when this thing gets 14 or 15 feet long, it's going to be a lot to hold on to for sure. Whew, man, And they come at you from all directions. So let's go ahead and move on to some food bites. 
So we've showed you some animals that are aggressive, that have that defensive bite to them. Now food bites are a completely different story. And as you can see, it's feeding day here in the Kluver room. Now these snakes are completely docile snakes, but they're really aggressive feeders. You gotta remember, most snakes are opportunistic feeders in the wild. So when a rodent comes by, if they don't grab it immediately, they may not see another rodent for two weeks, three weeks, or even a month if they're really unlucky. So again, these snakes get fired up and as soon as they smell food and they think it's it they're gonna hit it and sometimes if you're not careful your hand gets in the way so let's just go ahead and see some of these awesome animals feed see what happens As you can see, these guys are aggressive feeders. Once they smell food, it's completely odd. Ah, and that's what happens when you hand feed a snake <laughs> and it thinks that's your food. This guy just clamped on my thumb right now. And I gotta tell you, although they have pretty small teeth, it does hurt quite a bit and it's really clamping down. Now the problem is, is that if I try to just get this guy off, it's just gonna kind of squirm and just cram those teeth right into my cuticle right there. And you can see it's a really painful spot to get bit to. Now again, this guy actually believes my thumb is a pinky. See, and as soon as he uh, seen this isn't a mouse, he let go. But watch this, he probably take this mouse right away. See if he does it. Come on, little guy. No, see, he got so upset. This just kind of goes to show you with snakes. They don't want to bite if they don't have to. This guy was completely food driven. And when he realized that he bit my finger instead of a mouse, he doesn't even want to eat now. So what we're going to do is just let him back in his cage. We'll put the mouse down. And I'm sure after a little while, he'll probably eat. But that's just a lesson in the fact that food bites are more difficult than aggressive bites. And I got off pretty easy because he let go this time. Let's keep, keep going because I'm sure one of these guys is going to hang on and not let go. Ow! Ow. Uh, now this is a, an animal that has a quite an intense bite. You can see, look at this. He actually has my finger and the mouse at the same time. So this one really thinks it's going to eat. And unfortunately, I'm on the bad end of this one here because I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to convince this animal that my finger isn't food because it's smelling that mouse that actually has a taste of it right there and whew, I'm telling you this one hurts. Now let me tell you there's actually a couple things you can do in this situation right now. You can do what I do which is basically just tough it out, wait to see what happens and hope it lets go. You can actually take mouthwash, believe it or not. Put it in a little spray bottle, and if you just spray a little bit of mouthwash on it, it will let go. The alcohol in the mouthwash actually reacts to the snake, and they hate it, so they'll actually let go. Some people even dunk them in water. Uh, I don't like to do that to the animals, and to be honest with you, I don't even like to use the mouthwash thing if I don't have to, although it's painful. And uh, I wish you guys could feel this, because trust me, it hurts quite a bit. Uh, it's no big deal, it'll let go. It was just a mistake. Again, you can see how aggressive these animals feed. They just think when food's coming, they want it. So how do you avoid something like this? It's really pretty simple. You know, when you have a handful of snakes, you just use tongs for feeding rather than feeding like we do with hands and having mistakes like this. But again, when you're feeding thousands of snakes, just those tongs slow you down. And this is just an occupational hazard. And, uh, I hope this guy lets go soon, because I tell you, it's not feeling too good, little bugger. <laughs> but I'll go ahead and feed some stuff with tongs and kind of show you how I do it. And oh, he's kind of pulling away now. Again, he's positioning himself to try to see if he could take down my finger. Oh my God, I wish this guy would stop. Unfortunately, he's in a really bad spot. Let me just see if I can convince him. Hey, guy, I'm not the mouse. Oh, every time I move, he just squeezes down harder. Oh, see if I could just unwind him. And maybe if I unwind him, he'll decide, okay, I'm not going to be able to eat this. Oh, the problem is, is that every time I move him, his mouth moves and his teeth just get right into me. And you got to remember, the snake has up to a couple hundred teeth in him. And although these guys don't have the big teeth like the, the Amazon tree boys, He's got a lot of jaw power. <laughs> it hurts. Oh, and they're all recurved. 
So they're not just going directly in, but they're actually trying to get him off his rib. And, oh, oh, come on, young guy. Ow. Oh, now he's got me again. He let go for a second. Whew. Is it start? Oh, and now he's going to bite down. And you can see he's working his jaws where he's actually thinking he's going to eat my finger. But I got news for you, little guy. You're not going to eat my finger today. Oh. Now the good news is, you can see all the saliva right now on this. Oh, he was letting go. Whew! I tell you, that was a tough one. All right, little guy, you want the mouse instead? Here's a mouse, you want it? No, he's not gonna eat. I'm gonna put him back. But let me just tell you something. You see all that saliva right now, right on my finger? This is actually a really good thing because there's actually an anticoagulant in a snake's saliva that will actually make my my wound bleed a little bit more, which is great because the bacteria actually bleeds out of the bite. In all the years I've been bit, which is thousands and tens of thousands and maybe even hundreds of thousands of times, I've never had an infection from a snake bite. And that's because of all that saliva, unlike monitors that the saliva is full of bacteria. This is actually a good thing. Let's go ahead and move on and feed some snakes with tongs. So you can see these guys are aggressive feeders and certainly I took a few bites by feeding stuff by hand. The real safe way to feed any reptile is by using tongs or hemostats. Now the size tongs or hemostats depends on the type of snake. If it's a big python, we have tongs that are actually three and a half feet long. And of course these smaller snakes, we just use hemostats like this. I wanna show you a technique where you'll never get bit and just by using the hemostats, by holding the rat. But again, when you open that cage, your hand is a little bit vulnerable to a snake lunging out at you. So that's when a snake hook comes in handy really good. You can actually open the cage with the snake hook just like this and use the hemostats and you're never in a position where you're gonna get hurt. Now this is a great example right here. Now look at how crazy that animal was. If I was actually in there with my hand, I would have totally gotten bitten. That thing was all over the place. But again, if you use the hook to slide the drawer open, your hand is far enough away from the cage, and you use the hemostats, you're never gonna get bit, which is pretty cool. But again, I'm one of those guys that says, practice what I preach, because I'm gonna feed the rest of these snakes without tongs, I'm sure. So as you can see, there's different levels of aggressive animals and bites that are from animals that aren't even aggressive. But if I'm doing a show about mean snakes, you guys would kill me if I didn't do a little feature on my girl Satan, right? The truth is, she's an amazing animal and I've shot her before, but I wanna do a little different perspective. I want you guys to feel what it's like to actually open her cage and be right face to face with her. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this GoPro so you can see my view of what it looks like when I'm dealing with Satan. You guys ready for this? Camera on, here we go. All right, let's see what we got. And as soon as I come up to the cage, she's already hissing. <laughs> I mean, it's, it doesn't take long. And unfortunately, she's in the worst spot right now because she's looking right at me. You can see, whoa, whoa. This is a, a dodgy position to be in for sure. Whoo, and you can see. She's definitely not in a good mood. This is not unusual for her whatsoever. <laughs> but she is a crazy animal. Again, this is where she likes to be right here. She just wants to be left alone. But you have to be really careful because she's got a pretty good strike range. And if you get it with her the wrong way, she's going to get you. Again, you got to have kind of clap light reflexes with this girl. <laughs> oh, she is just so much fun, isn't she? <laughs> I don't know why I get such a rush out of this animal, but she's absolutely great. And the thing that's cool is that she's pretty predictable. But this is about as close as I think I'm going to want to be. So I hope you guys enjoyed this experience and you enjoyed the blood that I got off of all these things. It's been a great time and for whatever reason, I just love messing with animals like Satan. But again, getting bit is not that big of a deal whatsoever. 99.99% of all snakes are placid and beautiful pets. Whew, this was a fun one. What's the largest snake Brian has been bitten by? If you said B, an 18-foot Burmese python, you're 100% correct. Good job. 
So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show and realized that getting bitten by snakes is really not that big of a deal. And if you take the right precautions, there's no need to ever get bitten. And as always, I was Facebooking and tweeting my way through it. So make sure to follow me over at Snake Bites TV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites.